Hi everyone, welcome to Content Marketing Conference and today's session, Beyond Quippy Copy, Engaging on Social Media. I'm Ashley Foss from Atlassian and you can follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter at Ashley Foss. Social media has been an essential part of the marketing mix for over a decade. In fact, a survey from Statista found that in 2020, 94% of brands were using Facebook, 76% used Instagram, 59% use LinkedIn, and 53% use Twitter in their campaign efforts. And in addition to formal social media roles, many companies are building amplification and advocacy programs with their employees to extend the reach and authenticity of their content. So today, I want to share some tried and true ways to write engaging social media copy for a brand. First and foremost, you want to provide value to your audience. Are you sharing tips to help them through their day? Are you sharing stories to inspire them on their journey? Sending memes or gifts to give them a laugh? What do they get out of following you and consuming the content that you create and curate? When you think about sharing something inspiring on social media, you have to ask yourself, what are you trying to inspire? Is it an action? Do you want someone to feel compelled to immediately get up and go do something? If so, you want that action to make sense in connection to your brand. Alternatively, do you want them to feel an emotion? Do you want them to feel love or trust or hope or gratitude? These emotions become associated with your brand, so you want to be intentional about what you're trying to make someone feel with inspirational content. Next, you need to balance sharing immediately and being helpful in the feed with peaking interest. So many feeds get this wrong. They give away the entire point of the article in the feed, so readers have no reason to click over to read the full article. And this is particularly bad if you're trying to optimize for the click-through rate as many brands do. Alternatively, they don't say anything to get the reader to click over. They don't entice them to keep reading. They just say, eh, it's a good article. Why? What will I learn? How will you help me? Why is it funny? And finally, you need to balance being condescending and self-deprecating. So again, many feeds get this wrong. They come across as very condescending because they frame every article as required reading for a certain group of people or we've got it all figured out. But here's a primer for people who haven't caught on yet. Who wants to feel bad with a brand shaming them on social media? No one. On the flip side, some feeds go the opposite direction. They're too self-deprecating, such that it's really uncomfortable to read. Oh, I'm a work in progress and constantly needing to learn about this topic. Or, oh, I know so many people are so much better than me, so I always appreciate the opportunity to learn. You can share your expertise and your growth areas without sounding like a know-it-all or a downtrodden newbie. So, how do you do that? Let's talk about 10 tropes to write engaging social media copy. First, short, all caps, agreement or disagreement. So we've all seen the scenes in a movie where someone yells preach or amen or hear, hear. It's a quick, powerful verbal statement that something resonates. This same outburst tactic works well when you write on social media, and it works for both agreement and disagreement. Popular words include yes, this, truth, yup, noted, Nope, no, and nah. And as you can see here, Katie Martell shared something on social media talking about jargon, and I laughed heartily and agreed. Next, you can pull a quote directly from the article. This is one of the easiest ways to grab the audience's attention. So as you read, note the quotes or phrases that jump out at you. I call this skimming for the tweet. Simply copy and paste the interesting section verbatim into the description area of the social media post. You can see how IEO did this on LinkedIn. They pulled the quote, The reason musicians have so much to teach us is that the conditions in which they work are the ideal classroom for these mindsets. I don't know about you, but I'm pretty fascinated to read about the line between work and play based on that quote. Next, you can use cliches or popular agreement or disagreement sentiments. So this trope is closely related to the single word or all caps agreement, but it uses phrases that are common in pop culture. For example, louder for the people in the back, all of this, so much this. Well played, author, well played, here for it, hard pass. These are all great ways to show that you relate to the content that you're sharing. And as you can see here, Aubrey Valanche from Culture Amp, who's very active on Twitter, shared this, me, I have a no Friday meetings policy. 
also me. Why do I have five meetings scheduled on Friday? We've all been there, I know. Next, you can talk about feelings. So some articles are inspiring or surprising or delightful, and some events make you feel proud, honored, or shocked. There's even a short-term hashtag for this, which is how something affects you. It's hashtag TFW, which stands for that feeling win. Other phrases in this trope include when a post hits a little too close to home, all the feels with a Z, feels like this was written just for me, and timely peace. Alternatively, you may feel thrilled or honored or excited to see or be included or happy to attend. And as you can see here, Caterpillar shared on Facebook a short video saying thank you. We're so inspired by all the people who have been working with us as part of their 95th anniversary. Next, you can share a key takeaway or insight from the article. So you summarize the biggest thing that the article taught you or how it applies to a current problem or situation that you're facing. This tip is usually best for long form content that may be difficult to skim, and it covers a lot of different problems and solutions. And here you can see in this tweet, Tableau Software, the brand, said, what's IT's role in shaping a data culture? David Clark believes it starts with trust and a people first mindset. Next, you can give a general reason that the article is helpful to read. So this description is very similar to the key takeaway or the insights, but differs because it broadly describes the subjects covered in the post. For example, handy tips on scaling agile, great read for marketers looking to overhaul their demand gen strategy, or quick summary of the challenges of migrating to Java 8. And as you can see here, Carrie Orshea Gorgon from Marketing Profs shared on LinkedIn, my latest post for Mark Schaefer tackles some, tackles some common excuses for creating boring content. I do some quick debunking first, and then I offer tips for creating fun, effective marketing content. Next, you can ask a question. People love to feel smart, and we're primed to answer when something is asked. So you can pose a discussion question, start a debate, share a poll to get people talking, and keep them engaged directly in the feed. It's also an easy way to tee up content that you want your audience to watch, read, or listen to to get the answer. And as you can see here, Honeywell shared this. How do the good guys protect you from hackers? Find out in this podcast. You can also request help solving a problem. So if you need help brainstorming, if you're looking for information, ask your followers for advice or contributions. And Sarah Evans, a PR strategist, has shared these a number of times on Twitter. She's got a media opportunity and she needs an expert in the home biking industry to discuss a spike in sales. So she's looking for different requirements, including an industry analyst, biking system representative, and she tells you what it's for. Next, use a call to action. So some shares are simply to convey information or give your audience a laugh, but often you want them to do something. So tell them exactly what you want them to do. Examples of a CTA could include sharing, comment below, tag a friend or colleague, or give me a like if you agree. And it's generally best to use a single CTA for each post so that you don't overwhelm your audience. And it makes it easier to write clear, concise copy. And as you can see here, Duarte said, hey, we're doing a giveaway. Give us a heart below and post your story and make sure you're tagging Duarte Inc. And finally, tell a personal or background story. People want to engage with content that's relatable to their situation, success, or challenge. So sharing a funny story about a challenge you faced or heartwarming tale about making a connection is a great way to accomplish this. So Stacy, as she was sharing a post from Atlassian, talked about a quote from her youngest who kept saying, all you do is work. And it's really hard not to appear that way when everyone is here on LinkedIn or in their home office all the time. Speaking of LinkedIn, that last example gives us a jumping off point to talk about how to engage and increase reach on LinkedIn. It's got some quirks that are a little different from other social platforms. First, you can do long LinkedIn updates of up to 1300 characters, including spaces. So this gives you quite a bit of room to tell that story or share those details beyond the copy that we shared in the previous section. So for example, here's an example from my feed that's had over 20,000 views, over a thousand reactions and tens of comments. And it says, if you're in my org and you're having a hard time, please speak up. People are first. So I could have just posted 
a link to our career site to promote, hey, we're hiring, by the way. Instead, I've told a story about a quote from one of the leaders in our organization to demonstrate the type of culture and the type of leadership that we have at Atlassian. Next, LinkedIn places a high priority on comments, and particularly comments that come within the first hour of publishing the article. It helps drive both the reach and the engagement because it tells the algorithm, hey, this content is interesting. People are reading it. People are engaging with it. So you can gain this a little bit by having a small SWAT team of folks go in and start commenting as soon as you publish. You cannot gain this by, as the author or the poster, going in and commenting a bunch yourself. LinkedIn really likes to see that commenters are engaging not only with the author, but with each other. So if we were going to think of this like an equation, it would be the author plus other commenters is good. Commenters plus other commenters is better. The author plus commenters plus other commenters is best. And finally, tagging. So to prevent spam, company pages can't interact with personal pages unless the person actively at mentions that company. And it can't just be the hashtag. So we see this all the time in our Atlassian feeds. People will tag hashtag Jira to talk about our products or hashtag Atlassian team to talk about our conference. But the company page can't comment, like, or interact with that post at all unless you specifically at mention the page. So if you're building an employee amplification program or an employee advocacy program, make sure your colleagues and employees know that they need to actively tag the company page. You can also tag other people to increase engagement. But don't go spamming a bunch of people by tagging all of them. You want to be strategic about this by either noting that they joined you on a panel or attributing a post to them or asking for their specific expertise. And you can see here, I say I'm working on a conference deck about content strategy and the content playground. And it's walking through, at mention, Atlassian company page, this Atlassian case study of our Agile microsite. And then in parentheses, it was started by at Claire Drummond, who's my colleague who originally launched the site. You can also see that in the first comment, I've used the conference hashtag and I've included a link if people want to attend the session. So if you're running low on characters, if you run out of those 1300 characters, you can include hashtags, at mentions of people and company pages, and links in that first comment. So a few final tips. Social media is no longer a one-way broadcast channel. It's a place to create a two-way conversation with your audience. No one likes the party goer that just talks about themselves all night. They want to be with the person who connects them to the other cool people or cool ideas at the party. So whether you're running a brand account or you're engaging as an employee, think about how to be that connector. Next, be human. It's obvious when a company account is just copying and pasting links because somebody told them to share on social media. But part of creating that two-way conversation is to be human. Share real emotions and authentic stories. Give real advice about problems and solutions. Bring your human side to the feed. And finally, develop your own voice. So part of being human is developing a voice, both as a brand and as an individual sharing company content. Are you friendly or sarcastic, helpful or formal? Do you curse? Understanding how you sound will help you maintain that human feeling across all of your platforms. So I wanna end with a final example that brings these things together. This was an example of some, a Valentine's Day campaign that we ran from our Jira Twitter handle. And we said, hashtag Valentine's Day is almost here. What do you love most about Jira? Tell us and you might, might just get something sweet. And we had a small little animation saying, will you be our Jira time? So here we used a bit of quippy copy that we would typically see to engage in the feed. We used different media types. And as you can see, we had a little bit of a human voice to it to say, be our Jira time. And it was interactive because we asked people to tell us their answers and then we sent them some swag. Thank you so much for joining me for today's session, Beyond Quippy Copy, Engaging on Social Media. Again, I'm Ashley Foss from Atlassian, and you can find me on LinkedIn and Twitter, at Ashley Foss. I hope you enjoy the rest of your content marketing conference.